For the family of Robin Williams, the shared sorrow over his death has now descended into something else, acrimony. There is a bitter court battle going on right now over his estate. We have seen this before with so many other celebrities, and ABC's Lindsay Davis is on the story tonight. Less than eight months after Robin Williams' tragic suicide at his home in Tiburon, California, his family is locked in a bitter feud over the late comedian's estate, estimated at around $50 million. But at issue now, 1,200 items that belong to Williams, including valuable collections and personal mementos. I mean, the fact that we're in court is not a happy thing for anybody. Robin! This morning, an attorney for Williams' third wife, Susan Schneider, squared off in a San Francisco courtroom with the lawyer for his three children from previous marriages to protect the items that she thinks are rightfully hers. We're trying to honor Robin Williams' wishes that his wife can stay in the home and not have the home stripped of the normal things that are in a home. Schneider said in court documents that she's not seeking any entertainment memorabilia from her late husband's career. Fly, be free! Including the suspenders that he wore on the Mork and Mindy show, the breakout role which made Robin Williams a star. But she claims in court documents that days after Williams' death last August, she became frightened by the co-trustees after they removed items she feels are rightfully hers. $50 million sounds like enough for everybody, but you can't put a price on what you value. Some of those items, some of the things that Robin Williams collected over his lifetime, both sides are saying those things are priceless. The co-trustees and Williams' children deny removing anything from the home Schneider shared with their dad. Williams' daughter Zelda even speaking out tonight on her Tumblr page saying, My brothers and I have not at any point since dad's death been invited to or visited his and Susan's house in Tiburon, nor have we removed anything from it. And in court documents, they say their stepmother is adding insult to a terrible injury by interpreting their father's will in a way he didn't intend. His intention was to not have this in the courts. As an intensely private person, Mr. Williams wouldn't have wanted this. Schneider's petition suggests she should have personal items from their home, like the tuxedo Williams wore at their wedding less than three years ago. And she asks that his extensive collection of watches be excluded from the list of jewelry that's intended for his children. The art in the walls, the furniture, uh, her wedding presents, those are the things that stay. The, the other things, such as the Academy Awards statue and, and uh, uh, you know, other items, they, they clearly they go to the kids as Mr. Williams wanted. She also claims she's entitled to his collections of knickknacks, but court documents submitted on his daughter Zelda's behalf object, getting specific about what his children believe is rightfully theirs, an eclectic array of keepsakes as diverse as William's legendary career. From Mrs. Doubtfire Hello! to Good Morning Vietnam. Good morning, Vietnam! His Oscar-winning role in Goodwill Hunting. You don't know about real loss, because that only occurs when you love something more than you love yourself. But off-screen, William struggled mightily with depression and substance abuse. His fierce, frenetic humor on screen... <laughs> masked his true inner turmoil. He went to rehab twice and spoke about those dark times with ABC's Diane Sawyer. So to talk about it as caused by something... The, Not I caused by anything, it's just there. It's just, you know, it's, it's latent, just... waits. It lay, you know, lays in wait and for the time when you think, it's fine now, I'm, I'm okay. And then beep, and then the next thing you know, it's not okay. It's not going so well. The substance abuse reportedly cost him his second marriage. But then he got clean for the sake of his children. But the one thing that cleaned me up from that was having a kid. Of course, this is far from the first time a high-profile celebrity estate fight has spilled into the headlines. When you compare Robin Williams' will to a lot of other celebrity wills and situations we've seen out there, it's not that bad. When the king of pop, Michael Jackson, died in 2009, he left a five-page will that placed his assets in a family trust, designating his three children and his 79-year-old mother, Catherine, as the sole inheritors of his massive wealth. He intentionally cut Debbie Rowe, the mother of two of his children, and his father, Joe Jackson, out of his will. And when Aaron Spelling died one of the richest and most influential men in Hollywood, he all but cut his famous daughter, Tori, out of the will. The reality star and former cast member of 90210 grew up in her dad's palatial estate, which later sold for $85 million. But shortly before Spelling died, 
he decided to change his will, dramatically reducing Tory's share of the inheritance. She spoke out about the ordeal with ABC's Elizabeth Vargas. And he said, you're going to be okay. I made sure you're getting just under a million. To most people, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, of course. I think part of me in the back of my head maybe hoped it would be different. The rest of Aaron Spelling's estimated $500 million estate went to Tory's mother, Candy Spelling. At that point, Tory and Candy's rocky relationship turned icy. The two didn't speak after Aaron's death. These estate battles get so ugly because it becomes personal. In some ways, it becomes about pride. Robin Williams' widow and children are hoping their dispute can be resolved quickly. The late actor was intensely private about his personal life, and attorneys for both sides now say they hope to settle this dispute quietly, out of the court and away from the spotlight. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York.